Hi everyone, I'm Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts in room setup. You know, a lot of people's uh, rooms today, a lot of audiophile uh, rooms uh, in the last two or three weeks, and I've been seeing some really disturbing trends, so I want to bring those things uh, to your attention. First and foremost, the distances between the speakers and the sidewall must be equal. I mean, this is really no negotiation on this fact. Sound is an electromechanical uh, energy form and it travels at a constant speed. So we need to have predictability when we have those reflections coming at us at the listening position. As if we have different distances, we have different time frames, we have time. Uh, image shifting going on in the sound stage and, and a dullness and a grouping and our instruments and vocals aren't separate so we want to make sure that our distances are equal so this is a little alcove in, in one of our clients rooms so obviously if we didn't have that alcove we would have equal distances another thing that's very very critical and people just aren't seeming to get this for some reason is Sound takes on the characteristics of the surface that it strikes. Now, I know that sounds weird, but if, if sound strikes glass, it has a particular glass sound, if you will. That sound is real prevalent in your car. I don't care how many speakers you have, I don't care how much power you have, and I don't care the name of the system. It's still energy inside of a glass bowl. So it's got a particular sound to it. It's harsh, it's tinny, it's glaring and it's like nails on a blackboard it's something that we really really don't want to have so glass has got to go in our rooms you, you've got to cover it with treatment uh, when you're playing music if you're going to get any kind of quality sound out of it at all distance is equal on both left and right channels is a must also no cavities in the room because a cavity depending on what its dimension is if it's eight foot and it's two foot deep and it's seven foot high well it has an acoustic signature it has room modes it has all all kinds of the four acoustical distortions poor diffusion speaker boundary interference effect also and you know some comb filtering can be going on so we we get a lot of distortions out of this what this ends up being a little alcove or a closet that's open like that is another speaker because it's going to produce a sound based on its dimensions that it resonates at and that's going to interfere with our direct sound from our speakers so no hidden chambers no hidden closets fireplaces definite no-no they have to be filled when you're playing them because they can turn out to be a, a tuned resonator that uh, you don't even want especially with the long uh, pipe up in, in through the chimney so distance is equal between left and right channel sidewall reflection points obviously these distances back here are equal because we need predictability we, we need to manage reflections and manage low frequency pressure so in order to do that we need predictability to do that we don't want one side behaving differently than the other it's hard enough getting it right if there are different sides Another issue that has pros and cons to it, and let's talk about that, is an open rear wall. In this particular room, it goes back another 15 feet this way. So we don't have any wall. This is the couch, the seated position. So we don't have any room boundary surfaces directly behind the listening position. Now that's a good thing if you have speakers that are capable of filling this space with energy. It's a great thing for low frequencies because we have more volume for the pressure to run to, so to speak. Um, if you're after intimacy and development of your two-channel system in a real intimate kind of near-field monitoring way, this won't work because it gives you a lot of openness and a lot of spaciousness and probably not the best format for, for a more critical listening environment. But if you want a big sound stage, openness, and uh, lots of bass energy, uh, a perfect scenario right there. So in review, let's make sure our sidewalls are equal distance from our speakers, and please, no glass. And we must make both surfaces, hopefully out of the same materials and the same density, and no pockets or closets. And depending on the kind of listening we're going to do, we may or may not need a rear wall. Thank you.